Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to our worship on this eighth Sunday after Trinity. Come to the living waters, you that have a thirst and cannot quench it, and you that hunger for more from life. Come, you that labour but find no rest, and you that spend but are not satisfied. Listen out for God, and you will find sustenance for your soul and a purpose for your life. Amen. We bring our prayers of penitence before God, knowing that he knows everything that is in our hearts. When your kingdom on earth is a pale reflection of your kingdom in heaven, because there is still hunger and need, and there is still greed and gluttony. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When your kingdom on earth is a pale reflection of your kingdom in heaven because people are still homeless and refugees still seek sanctuary. Lord forgive us. Christ have mercy. When your kingdom on earth is a pale reflection of your kingdom in heaven because conflicts and wars rage between peoples and nations and prejudice and hatred divide neighbours and families. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. When your kingdom on earth is a pale reflection of your kingdom in heaven, because love and compassion are seldom seen, and hard-nosed reality collides with justice. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me, listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew, chapter 14. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the, to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, hello. Oh yes, I remember that day really well. It seems mad now. A load of us went off for the day to see Jesus. And it wasn't just me and my friends. There were thousands of others doing the same. Jesus was getting quite a reputation, you know. He spoke like nobody else. It gave you such a feeling. It made you want to be better. It made you feel full of hope and life and love. And he healed people. There was such a lot of sickness around, but people were transformed after they'd been with him. They weren't just physically better. They were better in all kinds of other ways too. It was as if they'd spent time with, I know you're gonna think I'm ridiculous, but it was as if they'd spent time with God. As if they'd come face to face with God and suddenly they knew themselves as they'd always been deep inside, as God had made them. And so of course we went to see him. It was quite a trek. We had to get up early morning. He'd got up early morning. He'd headed off in a boat. It wasn't unusual for Jesus to go off and pray early morning, I gather. But I heard afterwards that this time it was a bit different. That other holy man, the one they called the baptizer, He'd been killed in a really awful way. 
and he, the baptizer, and Jesus, they were friends or family or something. Anyway, Jesus was upset and he needed some time alone. <laughs> he didn't get much of that though, because we all turned up wanting his attention. I do remember thinking his eyes looked a bit sad, but apart from that, you'd never have known. He was just so kind and so wise and funny. He could be really funny. We just all sat and watched and listened to him for hours. It reminds me of some words that that prophet said, you know, that prophet Isaiah. He said something like, incline your ear and come to me, listen and you will live. That's just what it felt like listening to Jesus. Hours later, we saw Jesus's friends go to him and try to persuade him to stop. Well, you know, because it was getting late and it was hours since we'd had anything to eat. Anything we'd brought with us, we'd already finished off by then. But Jesus wasn't having it. Perhaps he was enjoying our company. Maybe there were still people that he wanted to heal or maybe he wanted us to experience something else. Honestly, I think that was what it was. I heard somebody say later that there was a boy who'd got five loaves of bread and two fish. Well, there might have been, but I didn't see any boy. <laughs> Myself, do you know what I think? I think it was some food that the disciples were hoping to hold back until everybody else had gone. <laughs> that didn't work out so well, uh, because I think they were, if it was that, they were embarrassed into giving what they'd got to Jesus. And it was just a tiny amount. It was ridiculous. There was no way it was ever going to feed that many people. Now, as you know, we do something we call communion where everybody gets a little piece of bread. Sometimes, sometimes we get some wine as well, but a little piece of bread. And I thought maybe that's what was going to happen this time. Maybe we just all get a tiny, tiny bit of bread to share. It would be a shared experience. But it, it wasn't like that, actually. Oh, it was a, a shared experience, all right. But Jesus took that bread and the fish and he said a prayer over it. He thanked God for it. Then he gave it to his disciples and said, share it out. And I still don't know how it happened, but there was loads of it. Everybody had plenty. And then, even more ridiculous, they collected up the leftovers and it filled 12 baskets. We'd had such a good time. We laughed and we sang. Oh, it was amazing. It was just like that other thing that Isaiah said. Hey, you that have no money, come by and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. It's just what it was like. Well, I've thought about that day many times since then, wondering what it all means. It's not as if we would have starved if he hadn't fed us. So I think it must have had a deeper meaning. What I've learnt about Jesus is that when you boil them down, most things that Jesus says or does are all about love. It was love that made him teach and heal that day, even though perhaps he'd rather have been on his own. It was love that made him want to feed the crowd rather than send them away. And it was love that made him take the small things that were offered to him that day and transform them into a feast for everyone. Later on, Jesus would say this to his disciples. I think it sums it up better than I can, really. He would say later, I am the bread of life. Those who believe in me will never be hungry. Those who put their trust in me will never be thirsty. Something like that. And he's right, you know. Since that day, sometimes I've been physically hungry. I've been lucky it's not happened very often. known that God loved me. 
And since that day, I've tried really hard to offer the very small gifts that I have, my time, my money, my talents to God. And I've seen him take them and use them and transform them, multiply them to bless other people. Now, picnic time. Brought some salmon sandwiches, fish and bread, just to remind me of that special day. Jesus enjoyed good food and enjoyed going to parties. Help us to appreciate food as you did, to share food, and to enjoy eating with other people. And like you, may we never be truly happy until all the hungry people are fed. Jesus, bread of life, feed your church with your gifts of faith and trust. Equip us for the ministry to which you call all who are baptised in your name. Grant that we may grow into maturity in union with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, nourish our public life with your gift of prophetic wisdom. Inspire us to look beyond immediate needs and shallow pleasures. Grant that all may delight in your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, sustain our life with your gift of sufficient food and water. 
give us the will to ensure none go hungry or are malnourished. Bless the work of aid agencies and trade justice movements. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, revive all who are weary and exhausted with your gift of patient hope. Strengthen and uphold those who suffer. Refresh them with the knowledge of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, restore us in the gift of your eternal life. Hear our prayer as we remember those who have died. Grant us to share with them in the eternal banquet of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>